Hi, and welcome back to AWS Julie. Today we're continuing our new series covering network fundamentals in AWS, and we will cover the first layer of the OSI model, layer one, the physical layer. Please remember to share this video with anyone who may be interested, give it a thumbs up if you like it, sub if you love it, and let's dive in. So going back to the intro lesson and our local networking understanding, how do devices on your network communicate? Let's look at the devices that are on a typical local area network. Most people have laptops, cell phones, tablets, and so on, and all of these devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi network or connected using a physical network cable. All devices on your network have a networking interface card, and since Wi-Fi is more advanced and we're covering the foundation, let's use the physical network cable to connect two of our devices. A physical network cable in our example is a copper cable and it gives us a point to point electrical share connection between the two devices on our network. More specifically, it transmits electrical signals between the two network interface cards. Network cables can also be fiber, which uses light, or Wi-Fi, which uses radio frequency to transmit the signals. And these cables are used to transmit unstructured data. And as a layer one, the physical layer, there are specifications that define the transmission and reception of the raw bits or streams of data between the devices that share a physical medium like this copper cable. The physical layer defines how to transmit and receive data in that raw bit streams, which are ones and zeros. So each network cable has standards for connectors, for voltage levels, for timing rates, distances used, data rates, modulation, and so on. These specifications for the cable or the physical connection means that each device on the network has a shared understanding of this physical connection. For our example, the copper cable with electrical signals are being used. And copper cable has the defined electrical voltage for binary one and another voltage for binary zero. So one device on your network can transmit zeros and ones to another laptop that will receive this raw data. And this allows communication between the device's network interface cards at layer one. And when you have more than two devices on your home network, you can use a device called a hub to connect all of the devices in your network. So back to our previous example, we had two devices with network interface cards connected using a physical copper cable. Now with the hub, our two devices are no longer connected to each other, but directly connected to two ports on the network hub. Hubs can have many different ports, and for this example, we're using a five port hub. So each laptop has a port, and we could then use the other port as our network grows for a cell phone or a tablet and so on. The way a hub works is that it receives data and then that data is retransmitted to all other ports on the hub and this includes any errors and any collisions. So at layer one, the physical layer, there are no individual device addresses. Again, all data received by the hub is then transmitted to every other port. So layer one is using the broadcast median to send and receive packages. And this limitation of layer one is fixed with layer two, the data link layer. And we're gonna be covering that in the next lesson. At layer one, two devices on the network can also try transmitting at the same time, which will cause a collision on your network. And collisions corrupt the transmission of data. At layer one, only one transmission can occur. Layer one also does not support media access control. So there's no method of controlling which device can transmit. All devices can transmit, so collisions are almost always guaranteed at layer one, and there is no way to detect when a collision occurs. So as you can see, layer one networks really don't scale well. The more devices, the more collisions and data corruptions you're gonna see. But layer one is crucial because it defines how devices communicate at that physical layer. And to add more functionality to layer one, we have the data link layer, layer two, that runs on top of layer one, the physical layer. And in our next lesson, we're gonna dive deep into layer two, the data link layer. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope to see y'all again real soon.